Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Noah here with Custom RC Mods, and ever since I published the build video for this Trimotor FT Bronco, I've been receiving multiple comments uh, requesting tutorial videos for my OpenTX mix on how I can like cut motors. So if I wanted to cut my back motor and only fly with the front two, or vice versa and only fly with the back motor um, on this airplane, again, in OpenTX. It's very easy. Um, it's a lot easier than I initially thought it was until I figured it out. And that's, of course, what I'm gonna be sharing with you guys today. I'm gonna be using the RadioMaster TX-16S, but of course, any OpenTX transmitter will work. Uh, the full color interface is what I'm gonna be using today. But again, if you have like a QX7 or an X9D or the more digitized LCD, display that's just going to be a little bit different so if you have any questions about different buttons to press or different um, pages things like that go ahead and comment those down below now before we begin i do want to say this is actually applicable in more situations than just this tri-motor here if you have a quad motor like cargo plane c130 i don't even know um, what you might have you can go ahead and use that there where you might cut the outside two motors and leave the inside two running or something like that you just got to make sure that the thrust is equal on both sides so you can can't cut this motor and have this motor running because of course that is almost like differential thrust and it's just going to go ahead and yaw the airplane so again two kind of independent systems here as well so if you have two motors one in a tractor configuration and one in a pusher configuration you can cut one add the other same thing that's applicable because the thrust on the yaw axis is equalized so if that makes sense, we're going to go ahead and proceed. Now, I do have differential thrust set up on this airplane, and I'm not going to be covering that in this video. It's also a fairly simple process that can be done easily in the Mixer tab of OpenTX, and I've already made a video about it with my FT Super B that I'll have linked in down in the description below if you guys are interested in checking that out. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into this thing with the channel mapping of this airplane. So the first thing I want to go ahead and show you here is this illustration that I've created to help us visualize the channel mapping setup for this airplane. Because of course with different motor setups it's going to be very easy to kind of get lost with which servo plug does what and which channel is corresponding to each motor. So it's best if you just make a little scribble or sketch and get this all put on paper just so you don't forget. So this is the plane right here and we got to recognize the default OpenTX uh, channel map which is AETR so that's Aileron Elevator Throttle Rudder. Now, obviously, this airplane does not have a rudder, so I've moved the second motor to my rudder channel, which is channel 4, and then, of course, after that, you've got 5, 6, 7, 8, all the way up till you run out of ports on your receiver here. So, of course, channel 1 and channel 2 are aileron and elevator on this airplane here, and then I have always do my left motor on uh, motor one here. So that's gonna be on your typical throttle channel there. And then motor two, my right motor, is gonna be on channel four there. And then of course, motor three here is on channel five. So once you've got all that taken care of, we're gonna be using this all for the rest of this video. So if I reference channel five, that's gonna be my back motor, so on and so forth. So if you guys get confused along the way, feel free to pause this here, take a screenshot. I don't know what you wanna do. And that will become very handy later in the video. All right, so here we are on the OpenTX main model page. And please, guys, before we get into any of this, make sure the battery is unplugged from the model. And, of course, make sure to take off your props whenever you're bench testing. I've had it happen to me before. You're remapping all the sources for your motors, and you accidentally you know, put it on the wrong switch, something like that. Everything just goes crazy, and it's just a nightmare. It's not worth the extra minute or two it takes just to take off your props. So let's go ahead and start by going into the model key here. We're actually going to page past the typical mixer page here where we do the differential thrust and a lot of the more common OpenTX mixes, we're going to go to the special functions tab because we're simply just adding throttle cuts to the different motors um, on the plane here. So as you can see, I've got a bunch of different cuts and I've got like different throttle cuts just for certain motors at certain switch positions on this one switch for my motor cut switch. And then I have a traditional throttle cut that cuts all the motor response um, before I fly so I don't accidentally bump this and um, you know, go ahead and trigger my motors as I'm heading out to the field with the battery plugged in. So we're going to go ahead and not pay attention to anything below the first three lines here, uh, because you can see all of these are stemmed from the SE switch. This one's the SE neutral, and these two are the SE lower. And now when the SE switch is in the up position, the highest position, that's when I have all three motors on at the same time. So go ahead and choose a switch and choose the position that will be in when you want to have all three motors on at the same time or all 
all your motors. So then we're going to go ahead and start off by making a new line here with the next, you know, ideal setup here. So first things first, this one right here, again, channel five, like we saw in the last diagram, is the back motor. So I want to go ahead and override the back motor to negative 100 when the SE switch is in the neutral position. So I went ahead and select that on so that it'd be enabled and that it would work. And then bam, we have that one done. So the high position has all three of them on at the same time. And then the neutral position has the back motor turned off or overridden down to negative 100. So same thing for the next two, except for now we have two motors. So we have to make two separate lines of special functions to go ahead and cut this off. So in the SE lower position, I wanna go ahead and override channel three to negative 100. That is our first left motor. And then of course, same thing over here, SE lower, I wanna override channel four, our our right motor to negative 100 there as well. Enable both of those just to make sure that they're fully functional when we want to use them. And bam, that's all you need to do there as well. So at this point, you probably get the gist of setting up throttle cuts all around. And I'd recommend that you go ahead and choose one switch. In this case, it's the two position SF switch that I use to go ahead and you know cut all the motors at the same time. So when in the SF high position, I'm overriding channel three, four, and five all at the same time to negative 100 once again there as well. I've also set up some sound so I know when the throttle cut is on or off. So when it's on and when it's off, and that's pretty basic there as well. You can have a field day with everything that, that is possible to do in this special functions window, but that's the bare minimum to go, minimum to go ahead and uh, get this all set up for uh, running motor cuts on your tri-motor, quad-motor, um, or dual-motor airplanes, depending, again, on what your configuration is. So this is very easy to adapt to whatever application you might be running, and that's pretty much all we have to do here. So let's go ahead and now zoom this thing out and get to testing the airplane. Okay, so here we are. It's time to go ahead and test this. Again, make sure that all three of your props are removed. The nice thing about some of these bullet adapters is I can just loosen it about a turn or so and just pull it right off because the tension on the shaft is released. There's no excuse. Go ahead and remove them all when you're bench testing. It's just the smart thing to do. So now that we've got the battery ready to plug in, make sure the throttle's all the way down and a throttle cut is on if you have it. We're gonna go ahead and plug in our battery here. Make sure that you hear all three motors start up in the ESCs initialized properly. And now we can go ahead and take off the throttle cut. And we're just going to do a basic test in the high position on the switch uh, where all three motors are going to be running here. So let's go ahead and just item up a little bit. One, two, three right there. So all three motors are running, of course, as they should be in the high position where there are no throttle cuts enabled. And now we're gonna go ahead and move my SE shoulder switch right here to the neutral position like so. And that will kill the back motor if we did things correctly here. Let's do it again and see if it works. So as you can see there, the back motor was not spinning, meaning that we successfully cut it when uh, the SE switch is in the neutral position. So now we're gonna go ahead and switch it to the high position right here, or the, I mean, pardon me, the low position uh, where we're gonna go ahead and cut the front two motors and the back motor will be the only one that is spinning here. So we're gonna power it up. Back motor is spinning, front two are not. So there you have it guys. We have our different modes here. We want all three, we want the front two, or we just want the back one running, which is very fun. It gives you a lot of different flying characteristics to go ahead and play with. I personally like to land this thing with the back motor only because that's the one that will actually clear the ground if I happen to land with some power, whereas these will actually strike the ground because this is a belly lander airplane. So that's super nice and convenient. And it's again, really easy to do here in OpenTX. I may decide to release a separate throttle cut video video um, in the future if you guys are interested in something like that where I can go more into depth on my throttle cut setup and different settings you might want to go ahead and play with for different um, applications and other things like that. That's it for now guys. Make sure to stay safe. Let me know if you have any other, other questions. Bye for now and I'll catch you guys in the next video.